Good morning and welcome to Get Technical. I'm Neil Hamilton with my host, as always, producer AB. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> I see a couple crying emojis. Um, all right. Happy Friday, everyone. It's Friday fun day. Producer AB, can you come on for a second? I, I, I can come one. on audio right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, not going to ask any questions. Uh, do we wait, have wait. Do we? Three, three, two, two, one, one, zero. Well done, producer AB. You nailed that. I had to make up for. I had two days in a row where we were a tad, tad tardy. <laughs> you know. Yes, we were a tad tardy, but you you have definitely made up for it. Um, do we have a guest today? No, we're doing Friday Fun Day. Let the chat run the show. Chat runs the show on Friday Fun Day. Yes, I'm aware. Um, all right, guys, let's get the thing going. Um, today, I want to talk about tech. Well, let's start off with our market overview. It's very hot in my apartment right now, so I might run to open a window. The seasons are a changing. Looking at QQQ, um, we are in an upward trend, all of our major indices are in an upward trend. We are, are we have resumed our bullish regime following a correction. Um, we did not break above this trend line that I drew. So let me um, let's do this. Let's get rid of this linear regression. All you see right now is the price action, the blue line, which is the 50 day moving average and a white line that I drew as a trend line starting with our low back in uh uh back during the 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 lowest point of covid times last year and i want to see us breach that resistance and get back into super bowl territory with qqq we got stopped right before it but don't be disenchanted disheartened discouraged um, because we had some big moves to get up there we're going to get a little exhaustion right little bit of exhaustion. Um, so I expect a corrective phase before we try again. Um, so if you were in just QQQ, good time to take some profit because I expect some some uh, uh, price to go down just a little bit there. Um, looking at SPY really quick. I mean, come on, what can I say about SPY? It's, it's absolutely insane. We broke above our threshold here. We absolutely broke out. The thing is unstoppable, it seems. Um, I'm not going to bet against buy, even though it looks really overextended on, uh, the Bollinger band. I think we are just in a great, fantastic, powerful, bullish regime. Um, no indication of stopping. There's no reason for this trend to end. Um, other than taking a look at the RSI here and seeing that we may be approaching, um, some overboughtness that we haven't had in a long time. If we go back, we haven't, we haven't gotten that high since. What was this? We haven't gotten about as high as we are since August 24th, 2020. Um, so watch it because look at this big old candle that happened then. Actually, it looks not too dissimilar to where we are now. Nothing to be afraid of. Just means time and entry on the dip. Um, all right. So there's your spy. There's your QQQ update. But because QQQ is so up, I know that tech names are up. So that means I start to figure out, I, I started looking around trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Let's take a look at Microsoft. Get rid of the Bollinger Band. Microsoft broke out. This is a bona fide breakout. Microsoft had what can be considered an ascending triangle reversal. And as soon as this thing broke above the 50 day moving average, Right before, right before this final candle, you could have had some real confidence. You were at least going to return to resistance, but it opened right at resistance the following day with a great breakout. These are sessions. This is the daily. Uh, Microsoft is absolutely carrying uh, QQQ. Now, let's take a look at something. That's our breakout. We were looking from a reversal from our correction. We got our descending tri or ascending triangle uh, uh, breakout. Um, a close above uh, resistance here um, for entry. Notice that this new thing that I got here on the bottom, this indicator is the relative strength to 
the S&P 500. This is not the relative strength as a momentum indicator of volume here in purple. This is relative strength to, to the S&P 500. Um, so this is where an easy way, instead of me, this is, this is the fast way of me saying Microsoft as the numerator over the denominator um, SPX. And then looking for strength that way and getting a chart. And then since the numer the, the numerator is this what we're looking at here, we can see that the percentage change uh, for Microsoft has been uh, outperforming SPX. So strong leader as uh, uh, emergent sector strength and relative strength. Um, so now we just have this, this little indicator to tell us how we're doing. So let me switch back to MSFT Microsoft. This little indicator gives me hope while this is happening, that this thing is actually performing well among 500 other companies that make up uh, our, our barometer for how the overall market is doing. So killer, killer trade if you got in. Give me a one if you were in Microsoft on the dip. My RSI levels are set at the standard default stuff. Give me a one if, if you were holding or you added to your position uh, to Microsoft at the dip. Um, good trade overall. Um, a lot of like, and here's just a, a little thing. When you get these sell-offs and then you get your start to form your W, if the, the second low is higher than the one before, start looking for this reversal pattern that we have here. This is bullish. The fact that this is higher, that gives us hope. Good job, everyone. Lots of ones. Great job. Great, great job. Um, yeah, we don't have to be out here hunting around for for little two, 20 cent stocks that have six letters in their ticker. Um, that probably aren't real companies. Uh, we can look at good old Microsoft. Now let's compare that to another stock. I spelled that wrong. Alpha, Alpha, Papa, Lima, Apple, AAPL. Similar pattern, similar pattern. Not identical though. Not identical. Um, we did get a little bit of a breakout. We broke above the 50 day and then gapped up yesterday, which is really good. So one thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to get rid of this wedge. And then looking at this like a double bottom, which it pretty much is, I'm going to draw a line from the beginning of our downward trend and then use my second point as the, the, the butt crack here in our double bottom. A good point of entry for when you see a double bottom forming. So it can be a little lopsided thing that looks like the ascending triangle that we just had with Apple. Or it can be just a, a perfect, I've been sitting on a chair all day, um, a double bottom. A good point of entry is often when we cross this downward trend line. And then you can target the peak of the butt crack. I hate my, my things aren't showing up. What the heck? There we are. Oh, I figured out why they don't do that. You need to have... Um, you need to have the pointer tool and not like a paintbrush. Um, so we are broken out. But the plot thickens. Remember the relative strength tool that I pointed out? Apple is underperforming. It is a relative underperformer against the rest of the market. Weak, weak sauce. All right. Average volume here. If you guys follow me on Twitter, I had a tweet this morning that said, hey, watch out, tech stocks really moved, but it was on middling volume, which is just a Tolkien-esque way of saying meh volume. All right, so it wasn't that great. When we get these breakouts, very important for a breakout is that when you're watching uh, uh, the move, you want to see some fresh new heights come in on that volume. All right, so Apple a bit weaker. Is this by the pure pattern? A breakout? Absolutely. 100%. This is a double bottom breakout pattern. I'm going to draw my little square around it. We're going to do the meat of the trade and all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to go to the final swing high before it dipped down into its swing low. I'm going to use the meat of the trade here. 
which is bringing this down to right about here. And if I brought up, brought up my uh, volume profile and, and just looked at this area, it would probably line up with this area, this line right here. 50% through my pattern is right about here. See how that lines up with it where it crossed? 50% through my, my square where I'm boxing in the meat of the trading in my double bottom pattern. We've got the exact area where we crossed up above that trend line. That is where we said, no, no, no. Resistance is now support. So at that point, you may have entered and targeted the top. And this is just two, two ways of using your technical tools, your drawing tools um, to time your trade. Now, this strength is not great. It is a lagging indicator, of course, but this tells me that it doesn't have as much gas in the tank, as many buyers behind it as good old MSFT. See a decline here, but guys, I think we're going to see a little selling action today. As you can see, the pre-market has, well, we're open now, um, is we're opening a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Um, open up the Bollinger Band to illustrate. You can see how overextended we are. If I get rid of all of my drawings now, just looking at MSFT, post breakout, we have fulfilled our breakout. As a matter of fact, let me, um, let me do a little control Z here. Let's, um, let's do a little thing. Let's just prove this pattern here. I want to take the measured move of this ascending triangle and then add it to our breakout. That is just about where we opened uh, yesterday and it's just about where we're trading. So that just goes to show you how you can use your patterns uh, uh, to create sell targets. Resolution has been achieved. Um, all right, so let's delete those drawings. I want to take a quick look at something that's been interesting to me. Um, there are some stocks that are also performing well that are not big, huge names. Anyone know Upwork? UPWK, looking for a breakout pattern. Everything in tech right now looks like QQQ do. All right, Aaron Bree, try to keep up, keep up with me. Uh, so let's get rid of the Bollinger Bands. QQQ, beautiful. Being carried by the greats. Actually, Facebook, I don't want to forget about because boom. But QQQ, doing one of these. Doing one of them. All right, so now let's look at Upwork. Not dissimilar. What I like about what's going on here. 50-day moving average, keeping it simple, not thinking about it too much. Look at how the 50-day the moving average has been a good, like, sort of trailing buy and sell signal for Upwork all along. Just super dumb, simple, classic 50-day moving average. This goes back to the days when guys were using pencils on paper to do their technical analysis. We breached the 50-day moving average yesterday, rejected, rejected today. We opened a bit, actually, we opened a bit below it. We tried to get above it within this uh, uh, first part of the day. Let's take a look at the four-hour. Well, the four-hour is going to mess up our 50. Um, at any rate, rejected by the 50-day. So let's go, go through the motions. Let's go through the motions here. Number one. RSI trending up. Good. MACD buy signal on April 1st, the day that you thought the show was getting canceled. <laughs> Got you. Um, buy, buy signal on the MACD. Um, and the MACD is, is steadily going upward, crossing that zero line. Um, relative strength declining declining, but this is relative strength against SPX, but holding at about zero. All right. This thing goes from negative one to one holding at zero. We want to see this strength come in and show that it's uh, uh, beating the rest of the market. 
Let's go through the motions. I wish there was a faster way to do this. Upwork, number one, trend line from the tippy to the middle. Done. Lines up with our breakout. Now let's box in our double bottom. Square tool. Lining it up with the higher point and then putting the top, our neckline at our, our the meat of the trade. Let's bring it over so everything's encompassed. You may have purchased here across above this trend line and then targeted at least the 50% line. And look at how that 50% line lines up perfectly with support for this consolidation phase. We dig deeper now. We've got patterns within patterns. We've got ourselves a teeny tiny little pennant. All right, it's a cute little bull pennant that we are broken out of and are holding support on it. That's why I'm still bullish on the stock. When we see a cross above the 50-day moving average, even more bullish. Want to hold this support line. This thing is probably even steeper. I should be drawing it like this. And then bringing this out. There you go. It's lined up with the wick now. So you purists, stay off my back. Doing it right. There you go. Measured move. Swing high, swing low. Added to the, whoops, excuse me. Added to the point of breakout. Gets us right to this level of resistance. Crazy stuff, how this stuff all fits together like a puzzle. Um, so what I want to see on Upwork is across above the 50 day. And then I'm going to watch for my resistance here at about 49 and a half. A break above 49 and a half with all other indicators agreeing puts us in breakout territory. At which point, let me get my little pen. A solid close. That means a bar at 4 p.m. Eastern time closing above 49 and a half, $49.50 is a buy signal at which point you can target the base to the neckline, add that to the neckline, make it horizontal, target about 58.70, profit potential roughly calculated about 20%, 18%. Um, okay. So yeah, I always think of that song, sweet, Swing Low Sweet Chariot when I say that. Um, okay, so that's Upwork iRobot. I'm just trying to give out some trade ideas here, folks. Um, iRobot, look at this. Take a look at the 50-day. What's happening with the 50-day? I use this all the time when we talk about um, uh, moving averages. It's got the claw, dude. This claw bad. This claw's good. This claw says, come here. Come here. <laughs> um, never, ever go like this to a person. And I don't care. Unless they're, they're your kid. Um, all right. So what we got here is a little bit of a, a defeat. We're getting beat down, not making it above the 50-day moving average. We want to see a break above that to get real serious about the stock. Nonetheless, let's go through the motions. What the hell happened on January 27th? Does someone know? Was that like National Vacuum Cleaner Day? If someone knows, let me know. Like that, I hate it when stocks do this because it makes it so hard to draw the patterns.
I mean, so there's your slope in line. I feel less confident about this. I would like to see what I think. I think pretty much any technician chat, let me know what you think. But I think pretty much what does the claw mean? The claw is so so with your with your moving averages and like your MACD um, steady movements are great. But usually breakouts are when you have a swift, almost like 90 degree turn. And you can say it's curling. It kind of looks like a claw. Arr. Like a pirate. A hook. Um, so that's what you want to see at the breakout point. Um, yeah, I mean, guys, let me know. Like drawing this all the way up to the wick is is really uh, uh, raining on my parade. But we'll do it because I think most technicians would say, you got to. But look. The sloping line lines up pretty much with where you could expect across above the 50 day moving average. So actually, if we take our conservative method of measuring the breakout potential for the stock, which is the swing high up here down to the swing low right here, measured in height. Headphones just turned off. That hasn't happened for a while. Vertically, and then add it to a hypothetical breakout point. So remember, we're using that swing high, swing low measurement, the price difference. So you literally are subtracting this lower price from this higher price to get this measurement here. You want a session close above the breakout. And wherever that happens, you can add the difference between the swing high and the swing low to set your price target, which is about 215. Um, I'm, I'm bullish, like, over like long-term bullish iRobot. I, you guys, you guys. Okay. So the OGs on the show are going to laugh at me because I assume that no one has the, the, the clean robots. Give me a one in chat. If you own one of those automatic robotic robots that goes around and vacuums your floor. I was convinced no one had it. Uh, Susa asks, can the measurement do the, the same for a downside target? Yeah. Yeah, you use it the same way. Reversal patterns, whatever, yeah. Give me a two if you don't have one. John has like six. I hate, I have hardwood floors. I hate sweeping. I hate it so much. But I also hate that my stupid vacuum robot doesn't automatically just find the charging station so it's always dead so it's it's just collecting dust which is it has a stroke of poetic justice some people love it i think you gotta buy the expensive models for it to be worth it which is i mean it depends like mine i think was like 200 dollars, and it was i saved up for it in my first apartment in detroit and i i told everyone about it and now I never use the thing. Um, something also to note is that we've got a relevant level that we keep kind of getting beat down at. So if you're looking at iRobot and you are targeting that price level that I that I uh, gave you, watch out for Mr. Resistance. I just made him up. He's not our friend. Yeah, it's it's lazy to use a, an automatic vacuum. Whatever, man. I live in the future. Catch up. Um. <laughs> uh, all right. So that's that's up. So we got Upwork. Upwork, I really like. Upwork, I like. Upwork, I buy on a break above uh, forty nine. And let's let's draw this out. So this is a classic breakout. Uh, let's get our profit loss tool. Draw it. I'm gonna draw it like a just a little bit visually above that line because I want to close above it. And I'm going to put my stop loss at previous resistance, which is support. I'm going to put it right at support on this day. Why? Because I'm stingy with my risk. It's a good risk re reward ratio. Stop loss, about 48 bucks, 4807. Entry, about 4990, 4985. Targeting, about 5870. 
Oh, shit. Oh, why do you know? It doesn't want to stay like. Why is it moving? Whatever. It's kind of like that. It's kind of what it is. Um, all right. Breakout trade, breakout watch, Upwork. Um, Bill.com is actually a good stock. Even though it's, oh man, it's getting shat on right now. Every Everything, everything like I said, has had some really big uh, swift moves on shallow volume. So if you look at this period of time, look at our volume. Let's look at, um, I mean, let's compare that to Microsoft MSFT. Microsoft, huge moves. Huge. If you bought the moment that it crossed above, uh, or the moment that it actually closed above the 50-day moving average, that's a solid 7.7 for big old Microsoft. That's lovely. Tons of options available there. Um, and then looking at the volume during that same period, declining, middling volume. Mid, your volume is right about it at its average. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna peter out. It's gonna peter out. But I don't know. Today's looking good for Microsoft. I think that's getting a lot of press right now because uh tech has been so beaten up and it's everyone wants to celebrate rallying out of the correction. Yeah. Um but look, I mean it's it's already hitting resistance here. This is starting already to look just like a corrective phase where we just have a strong impulse up and then either like a sideways or a downward sloping corrective phase, um, which is gonna be another entry. Depending on everything else willing, that could be another great entry for Microsoft. Uh, okay. Etsy. Etsy. Let's take a look at Etsy. Wait, no, I was going to look at Bill.com. Did I already do this one? No. I like Bill.com. I like it less now that it's it's back down below the 50-day and it isn't like hanging on. We will see intraday. What, what, I, what you see a lot is, let's say, this is your 50-day moving average. You'll get a candle that looks like this, like the body is up here, and then you'll get a tail like that as the buyers are like pushing it because they want it above the 50-day moving average. You see this, and it looks exactly like this guy. I can. This is the only thing. <laughs> this is the only thing I think about when I see that. <laughs> So hang in there, buddy. Um, we'll see. Although this is very aggressive. This is actually a bearish engulfing candle um, as a wider range than the previous one. So we shall see. Like it's already starting to get pushed up. Um, let's take a look at it on the hour. Uh, actually, let's go down to 10 minute. It's got some very clearly defined shelves, but like a bloody red candle here. Bloody red candle. But look at this on the 10 minute. This looks like this could just be a little re reversal pair. See how the green one's trying to come in? Is if this green one gets a little bit bigger, you can reasonably respect uh, expect this is ten minute bill dot com. This is like um, this is very similar to Upwork, and it's not doing great. But if the body stays large, you can expect something like that as the following open. Um, hang in there, cat. Um, I like bill dot com and I like Upwork because they are. Um, they go together and it's like when you look at uh how great hedge fund hedge fund portfolios are, are built um they're built on on stocks or companies that are um playing playing in the same sandbox um not competing but but contributing to the same overall concept like my thesis is that companies will continue to outsource labor their their workforce to online freelancers or just online people that are freelancers that would like to work for that company full time, rather than doing local job postings. This is a remote work is going to stick around based thesis. And Upwork is the is the leader there. Um, so I like the stock. Bill.com is a way a, a way to pay those workers um, that are 1099 contractors. Um, so there you go on that. Um, and let's just go ahead and finish the damn thing here on Bill.com. What do we got? A little descending triangle action. We are broken out. 
That's one way of looking at this thing. I'll feel a lot better if we break above that 50 day today. Like that will be my buy signal to enter. A lot of times when you've broken out above your upper resistance on a breakout pattern, don't chase. Like they say, a lot of people will say, if it's already moved 5% or more, you've missed it. There's a chance that it will whipsaw. Don't enter now. You should be timing it before that. Um, but if we get that solid move above the 50 day, that's another buy signal and something that I'm happy to pile into. And by pile into, I mean actually ease into. So I'd probably enter this with something like just based on my portfolio some, and, and the fact that this, this stock I haven't invested in uh, before, um, I would ease into this like $250 at a time on the way up. Watching it day by day. Um, and that's just common stock. That's not options or anything like that. Um, so since we've already gotten to the breakout, the breakout point is actually right about here. So you measure that up and you can say the breakout profit potential for this one is about 42%. So I'm bullish bill. I mean, look at this darn thing. Let's uh, let's really quick do a linear regression on it. This is just the auto generated channel. I'm going to erase all of my drawings. So if you like them, take a picture and delete, delete. And then this gives you a little bit of perspective to the current leg of our upward trend that we're in. Um, so we want to return to this mean. We want to pass that mean and then hit the upper line. Now, let's do this, the actual work and draw some things ourselves. I want to go to this low. And then I want to go to this swing low to draw a trend line. And I just want to see what it looks like. Doing some happy trees. And while I do some happy trees, that reminds me, Joe is missing something. All right, folks, it's time to make yourself comfortable. Fill up a, a glass of, I don't know, I feel like eggnog today. I don't know why. Maybe pour a little something extra in it. Pour some little something extra for Mama. Put a little Red Bull in your in your eggnog. Call it a Christmas cocktail for traders. All right, so we got this trend line. We are respecting it. Now I want to get an idea of a trend line that we can return to. So to do that, I'm going to create a channel. So I'm going to do a parallel channel, and look how. These line up so, so nice. No, stupid tool. That's not, I don't want the Fibonacci thing. <laughs> I need to get rid of that. Um, where's my parallel channel tool? Just some happy parallel channels. Um, here we go. Here we go. Boom, lining it up with my basic trend line, which we always draw on the right side of our candles. As you can see, I've done here in a bullish trend that's support in a bearish trend that's resistance. I'm going to break it up to our swing high. Look at that. And then if 13 is here, I know his real name, but I won't say it because I like the sort of Batman-esque nature of his online existence. You can see that we've got a nice mean through this whole pricing channel, through the history of the stock, bill.com. And that our breakouts, let me do, I'm just going to do a quick and dirty redraw my breakouts. I wish I hadn't deleted them. Um, all right, so I did a, what did I do here? I did a whole ass descending triangle. There. Come on, come on. There. There, there measure and yes there's a double bottom within this yes patterns within patterns it's crazy how that works no need to stand around with all your technician friends arguing about what the pattern is <sighs> and there you go at our breakout point you can see that the measured move lines up just about perfectly with the upper channel on our sloping line of resistance it's beautiful how these things fit together.
<laughs> um, beep, 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 boop, boop. Come on. Um, all right. Now it's about time. It's 10.04. I'm tired. Look at me. I need a vacation. I haven't taken a vacation besides like sick days since I think January 2020. I can tell I kind of look like shit right now. So what I'm asking you folks, give me some stocks and we'll take a look at them together. St remember, guys, remember the rules. Ticker plus timeline. I'm happy to talk about. I'll talk about anything from a positional trade, from an investment. I'll talk about a three year investment all the way down to a, a one minute scalp. But just give me the ticker and the timeline and we'll look at it. And I'll just wait. Look, I broke my, my microphone. You guys need to tweet at Jason Rasnick and say Neil needs a new uh, mic mount. This, it has a little piece of plastic that's it's ruined. Okay, so we got some. All right, so, oh, a four hour. We don't actually get, we don't get four hours very often. Um, so where was that? I missed it. All right, TRCH. Oh, TRCH. Haven't heard that one for a while either. Nice, nice, nice. Four hour chart. Getting rid of the 50 day because it doesn't really apply on the four hour. Drawing our support line. Here. Mult it's been touched there multiple times. Now, now we're going to draw our vault. Ooh. Wait, hold on. I'm not doing the four hour until we do a longer time frame analysis. Hold on one sec. Wait a tick. Messy, messy stock. You guys love these. These are your chat room stocks. We've been here before. We've drawn levels here before. Um, let's get out a little uh, little VP action and draw just a solid line right where the, the prevailing point of control is. Um, I'm going to make that line a bit thicker to indicate import. Um, now let's zoom in with this volume profile and see if that line changes. No, it remains the same. It still remains the same. And now it goes lower, of course. All right. So that was using volume profile to find where the highest, the, the price points where there was the most volume of trading. Volume at the bottom is about when it was traded. Volume profile is about at what price it was traded. Don't worry about the yellow and blue. No one else does, so I, I don't know. Um, torch one month. Now let's get down. So it's red. Let's do multi time frame analysis. Red two months in a row. Weak, uh, uh, kind of neutral, previously neutral green, uh, uh, red previous week. Um, all right. Now we're down to the day consolidation station. Let's get this out of the way. Okay. We're crossing above that. Now let's get down to four hour. And let me, uh, now that we're on four hour, I'm going to raise my line a little bit because I see a wick just to make this a little more accurate. Okay, so look what happened. By by getting down to the four hour, I was able to more accurately see the, the high point here on March 12th. Um, and that took my, my line up above where we're currently trading. So we have not broken that trend line yet. So my take on TRCH is draw your trend line at the very tippity top of this downward trend like this is a pivot point right we had up 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 and then we pivoted down 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 so start there and then actually hold on i'm tripping guys i'm tripping i don't have a second anchor point for my line so i was being totally full of it so we got it at the top and then now i need to anchor this part of the line here let me delete this stupid thing top and then now i need to anchor the next part on this thing so I'm, I'm making my horizontal line line up right there. Good. And then the green lines we drew we drew previously. I don't know when we were looking at this stock before, but they were just left on the chart. Um, you guys can see those, right? Yeah, you can see them. Uh, those are just support and resistance levels. Um, I've already got the, the resistance here. What was that coming from? 
previous support. Um, so we're hitting it right now. We're hitting it right now. You have gotten out of the territory where this is a good trade. That already happened. The, a break above this sloping line of resistance already occurred. Now we're in sideways consolidation and you're watching for a reversal. And what you may ask will give me a sign that a reversal is incoming. Well, I just happened to know. Let's um, let's delete, delete, delete. Go away. Go away. Let's use the peak of our swing high before the, the end of our trend. So we've got this downward trend, and then you've got this final swing up, swing high, before we went down to absolute bottom. All right? So I think you guys already know what I'm about, about to do. We want to see something that fits in here. A little something like that. Um, right now, it does not look like a candle candidate, candled it, uh, a candidate for a double bottom, but there's a couple things that can happen. There are three things that can happen, but there are two things that are likely that will happen. Um, paintbrush. Number one, most likely, is base consolidation, gradual rounding rise upward back toward $2.06. And you'll probably hit a little resistance before that at 204. The next thing that can happen is that, well, yeah. This thing is so it's such a small cap stock. There's going to be a lot of noise or micro cap. Um, there's going to be a lot of noise. Is this micro cap or small cap? I don't know. Um, there's going to be a lot of noise in, in here that's going to throw it off. Like what I was going to say is, is we might ha already have our little double bottom thing. And it's like this awkward booty could be very well could be. This is a little bit higher. But then with these micro cap stocks, a lot of times you get a rounding bottom and you've got action like this like all the way between it but it's this these sporadic like sporadic spurts um at any rate you've got two levels you can look at i think let me get my draw or my pointer tool i think a break above the body here can be bullish and you can target 207 so a break above 194 you can target $2.07. I think a break above, yeah, because this was previous resistance, a break above $1.89, you can then target $1.95. Big moves, you want to see a return to this swing high that we have over here. Then you're targeting something a bit bigger. Which actually, I would go to this wick to measure this. Thanks for the two dollar dono, uh, Hertz Scrambler. Uh, you want to go from the lowest point to your swing high on your neckline. Add that to your neckline, and whoo wee! How many times is this going to happen today? That measured move lines up with this green line that we previously drew. Setting you up for a price target of about two dollars forty-five, around about there. Um, so the bigger trade is something like this. But again, this is such a small stock; it can be extremely volatile. Um, something like, where's my tool? This thing, yeah. A little bit above that line. Self target. Do your stop loss right about at the body of this candle. Nice little low risk high reward trade um what chart is this this is trch you can see it in white right here this is trch on the four hour increment um all right hertz scrambler let's get uh tpor thanks for the two on the one year chart okay so if we're looking at one year i'm going to switch to monthly i'm going to switch to tpor over this over the look at this over the course of a year so just you want to look through 2020, basically. 
pay no attention to those drawings. Noise! This has been, this is what we call multi-year resistance. Um, let me get my rectangle tool. Because these things are often within ranges. Boom. Boom. Let's get our, let's go down to daily now. I love it. I love it. I love it. This thing rocks. So we've already kind of resolved what happened here. This is TPOR. I'm looking at the daily now. Ascending triangle reversal pattern for a breakout, which we're currently in and resolving. Excuse me. Right there. Measured move, the swing high down to the swing low. Pure height. Added to our neckline or our breakout. Sets our price target at about $52.65. Whatever, I'll leave it like that. Um, but... As you had me look at the uh, the year long time frame very astutely, you can see that this is a meaningful, very meaningful price level that we're hitting resistance at. We're actually beaten down. I can kind of see. Um, so, uh, 2018, 2018, today. If we beat this, the more times that you touch this resistance, the more like well, that's that's a stupid way to put it. Yeah, that is actually what they say, isn't it? The more times you you hit resistance, the more likely you are to break out. <laughs> um, duh. Um, at any rate, big, big moves. If you can break out above this level. Patterns within patterns. Number one, this looks like a nice consoli consolidation phase to me. Um, so we're, this is it looks like a healthy trend. Let's let's actually confirm that. Uh, uh, maybe not so much. Um, volume is not great behind this. We've had decreasing volume during this move. However, some of these big upstrokes are in the upper percentile. So we'll draw this to kind of set our, our benchmark. I'm looking at volume right now. Um, why is it stupid volume? Um, paintbrush. Impulsive, corrective, impulsive, corrective, impulsive, corrective. This is this whole thing's just corrective. Impulsive up um, above that multi-year resistance line, and then corrective to a, just about the bottom of it. So you can use, excuse me, you can use this corrective phase after I get rid of these um, stupid paintbrush tool. Excuse me, these paintbrush strokes. There we go. Um, you can use this corrective phase as another pattern, and you can simply just draw your sloping line of resistance and say a break above this, and let's really get in here. Let's really get in here. In fact, I'm gonna go down to my four hours so I can get exact. Spotty, though it is. There we go. Let's go back to day. What the, f what the f just happened? Like that. You can look at this corrective phase as an opportunity to buy, but just know you're buying at uh, at resistance. So if this weren't a multi-year line of resistance, you could use this as an entry. But because it is a multi-year line of resistance, you want a solid close, solid, solid close with increasing volume. But Let's look at a couple other things. Let's check our other indicators. So watch the, I, I think the main thing is watch the volume here. It's going to need a big thrust to get over this line. Um, you are, this stock is performing very well against the market. Obviously. MACD 
fast line is coming down as it should be. So with MACD, you're going to watch for the claw, the inverted claw. So if you've got your MACD, you want your fast line to do that. And you want volume to be like, oh, whatever. There's my paintbrush to be like this to get up there. If you're not getting the volume behind you, I wouldn't hang on to it. It's a good pattern, but it doesn't have the rest. It doesn't have the juice. Um, okay, Michael H. Acts for a swing. Um, declining momentum on the RSI, declining volume, similar themes here. Declining volume, declining RSI. MACD flashed a sell signal with the fast line crossing below the orange line, the slow line here. Um, flashed that signal on April 8th. Um, relative strength, still good. Above zero. Now let's look at the, the price action. Deleting all drawings and just looking at price on the daily. Starting from scratch. Big downward trend. We're going to draw, we're going to do a couple things. We'll draw a line from the top and we'll anchor our second point at the swing low before this little double bottom occurred. Not good. Not good. Not good. Let's do it right here. Yeah. At the butt crack. This could have been an entry for this double bottom that is within a greater pattern. Yes, we have talked about the stock a lot. There's many ways to skin a cat. There are many ways to skin a cat. Bulk of the trading. Flashing a sell signal. So that, that where it crossed right there, once again, pretty consistent here, is the 50% point on the box that we've drawn on this double bottom. So crossing that sloping line of resistance from the tippy top of, of where the trend the downward trend began down to the um, the pivot, the middle pivot on your double bottom here at the very, very bottom of our larger pattern um, lines up almost perfectly with when the stock started to consistently uh, trade above the 50% line. Um, broader pattern that we all have been watching on the show. is our rounding bottom. We get our our final large swing high down to our lowest point, line that up with the other side here to give us our neckline. So that's our neckline for our rounding bottom. Let's bring this up a little bit. You can see that we... Yeah, look at that. Let's get in there. Um, you can see that... We got above it during a day. This is the daily on X, United States Steel Corp. But the body stayed below this line, exactly below it. Can I raise this? I can. I want to. Like that. Now let's see if the wick obeyed that. Yeah, it's a little bit messier than that. Um, and then what formed following the rejection, a rejected breakout, which is not unusual for big rounding bottoms is a cup with handle because we have a cup with handle, which is a continuation pattern because there's an upward trend followed by rejection, selling off reaccumulation. Rejection once again, some selling off. We draw our sloping line here. You could reasonably have entered this crossing at about 2295 or just lower if you saw it. There's a couple ways to skin a cat and draw that line there. But that's how I'm going to draw it. And they call it a cup and handle because it kind of looks like this. Um, but now look how the price is respecting this previous line of resistance as support 
So what we got was a big move on high volume. Pretty high volume. You're looking for like 30 to 40% higher, higher than average volume on a breakout. It doesn't have to be like a skyscraper. If it's a skyscraper on a breakout, that just that just should make you more enthusiastic about it. Um, but we are holding this. So one way to view this, which is the way that I'm viewing it, is we got our impulse. We got a long corrective phase. Now we need to start seeing some volume come in. So watch the volume on X, but be, be mindful that RSI is trending down. So we want to see a curl on, on RSI. We want to see the fast line, which gave us a sell signal um, on April 8th. We want to see that do the reverse claw and curl up and cross above our slow line. But we still got this relative strength. It would be really good to maintain that. Um, so I'm holding for X. Still, I don't think X is a buy. Like profits were taken. Kudos to you. Like definitely drop a one in chat if you took profits um, on this initial breakout. But you should always be watching for breakouts for the whipsaw. From fast moves come fast losses. Um, but we are holding the support. I'm not in X. I've been maintaining this until 2733. But I might ease in a little bit if we get a solid close above this resistance. Because I would treat that like a, a little breakout. So a solid close above 2442. Let me draw that line now. And so you want to see a candle that does one of these. Might get it next week. Um, uh, tech got a lot of gas this week. It's going to take it away from value. Yeah, good for you guys. Good for you guys. Um, did we do Apple yet? Yeah, we did. Um, Isaac, we did Apple at the very beginning. All right. Chat. We have time for one more stock, so go fast, fast. Okay, and then NNDM. Whenever you, okay, we'll do NNDM. This is the last one. Oh God, I love NNDM. Um, NNDM is sick. I like it on a personal level. We're good friends. Look at it, respecting this line. Let me get this little thing here. This little support that we're at. Previous support consolidation phase over there. Mm, mm, mm. Looking good, looking good, looking sassy, looking fresh. Go to our high point. Go down. We want to break out of that. We want to break out of this yellow line, which I'm going to make a different color so I don't confuse everyone. Where's my thing? There it is. How about a hot pink? I'm going to get rid of this little squiggly squiggly. Kind of already doing it. So it looks like we may have found our bottom here and it might be time for a reversal. Watch for a reversal pattern on this. Let's look at NNDM and just see if this rounding bottom resolved itself. Neckline rounding bottom down to low point. Now all my lines are pink. Add that to the neckline. No, it didn't. You can see that's what this is actually. Um, the patterns tend to resolve, even if there's stuff that happens in between. So I think conservatively, what you'll probably see is this is the left butt cheek on a, on a double bottom and you're forming the right butt cheek. And then you'll want to do all the good old double bottom reversal breakout stuff. All that good, <laughs> all that good stuff. And then... Uh, You'll be targeting your resistance here, plain and simple. I mean, if you measure from the, the low point here up to your uh, pivot, that's going to get you to just about that resistance. So expect consolidation there. Um, and then you really are shouldn't be confident in, in this thing until we get a solid break above this resistance because there's still much to be won with NNDM with a move of 50% above 1815. 
Um, so I'm feeling good. Patterns within patterns. You're looking for a reversal here uh, with a, your measure move being your um, uh, uh, your profit potential, right? So if we take um, the bottom here, we make our midpoint, the meat of the trade there. Um, that would resolve at about a huge percentage. What the heck? Oh my God, the stock can rip. Let's get this on here. NNDM, everyone watch NNDM. Everyone make sure it's on your watch list. Let's watch it together. If something happens, I don't know about tweet at me. It is 1029. Thank you all for joining me on this Friday fun day. You guys have had some great tickers. I think NNDM was a great note to end on. I'm feeling really good about that one. Just got to watch for it. We just got to watch for uh, the right thing to happen. All right. Um, patterns within patterns. They will resolve. Um big theme of the day is some of these big moves have had weak volume and some of the things that look like they're about to break out just don't have the volume behind them so remember volume is a very essential tool in your technical analysis uh toolbox um as always this is get technical i am neil hamilton and with me as always has been producer ab thank you all for the picks have a great weekend enjoy it take it easy tomorrow Benzinga Bootcamp go to BenzingaBootcamp.com we're not going to be able to do a te get technical special edition Saturday session because of the bootcamp but it's basically the same thing but bigger all right so what we did was like a concert in like a bar and what we're about to go is like Metallica live at Madison Square Gardens it's going to be sick be there Benzinga Bootcamp is free don't pass it up all right thanks guys happy trading